welcome to a special edition of the Sports Block. This is our first time broadcasting a lacrosse event, and I am Kelsey Barbaria, one of your co-hosts today. My name is Brian Hughes, and I'll be running play-by-play. -play. We are out here, and it is beautiful outside. It's nice, and it's about 72 degrees. There are a few storm clouds, but I don't think that'll be a problem. I think today is going to be a great game because Middle Creek and Panther Creek have been going at it head-to-head -head every year for the past couple of years since they've both entered the Tri-9. And they've ever since the beginning, they've just been going head-to-head -head against each other really tough, and it's always been a close game. Our JV team won earlier tonight, and it kind of blew them out, I would say. Yeah, most people would say that <clears throat> the way the JV team plays, that's how the varsity game will end up, but that's not always true, so the Mustangs always got to be on their feet. That's completely true. I think we're about to announce the starting players. Our starting lineup for the Mustangs tonight. At defense, we have Michael Shefke, Zach Bradford, and Dennis Wilson. Our LSM tonight, our long stick midfielder, will be Jacob Watkins. Our mid midfielders will be Joseph White. Justin Medwar and Jacob Watkins, the LSM. And our attack will be Ben Detzer, Trevor Montague, and Graham Southwick. And at goalie, we have Nick Arkiri. You know, Nick Arkiri, he's a freshman, and this is not his first game starting either. And we're only a few games into the season, but he's doing great so far. That's very impressive. Yeah. All right, so we got the ball down to X. Ball's bottom left. 11 gives the ball back up to top left. Good stick by number six, blocking the ball. Number 13 tries to cut in, gives it back up to the top. He's going to cut in, and he's going to try and look for the pass back to top right. But he's going to split in, and he's going to take the shot, and it bounced off the rim. Ball went top left, and Graham Southwick got the recovery. Knocked out by number 20, 28 on defense from Panther Creek. Time is 11 minutes, 15 They're going to have one of the midfielders take the ball off. <clears throat> They're probably going to try and get it to the goalie, because when the goalie has the ball, nobody can really touch him without him getting it to the other guy down the field. Ball's in play. Graham Southwick with the push. He's going to bring the ball past the midfield line. He's going to try and look to get it out of his hands. Number nine is staying on very tightly. He's going to get the ball down to bottom right. He passes the ball to X. Gives the ball up to top right. Jacob Watkins is playing strong defense, and he takes a shot and misses. Panther Creek recovered it. Ball to top left. Take another shot, and it's good. Although he's a freshman, I don't think he's that nervous to be a goalie, Nick, but everybody, no matter... Probably a lot of pressure. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure starting no matter who you are, but if you're a freshman, this is your first time playing varsity lacrosse, you just have to do your best and hopefully not mess up too badly. Earlier this evening, we had a Tri-9 baseball final. Middle Creek baseball defeated the Panther Creek Catamounts 3-0, to zero, and a three-run shot it was the difference. All right, Justin Menard just won the faceoff and gave the ball to Joey White. Joey White's running top right. Just took out the LSM, who's mainly a defensive player. They subbed in Drew Conway. Joey just get, gave the ball to Drew Conway. Gave the ball back to Joey. Joey's going to look for an open pass. He's going to give it across the field to Trevor Montague. Gives the ball up to Drew. Passes it back over to Joey. Gives the ball down to Graham. Graham passes it to X. He's going to look for an open man to take a shot. Justin Medwar catches it. He takes a shot, and it's no good. And there's a flag on the play. There will be a penalty on one of the Panther Creek players for an illegal slap check. It'll be a one-minute penalty on Panther Creek. That means they'll be they will not have an, an even amount of players on the field for one minute until one of the teams score, or until the minute runs out. 
Drew Conley's going to start with the ball top right. He gives the ball bottom right. He gives the ball back up top right. Skip pass over to top left. He gives it back to top right. Ball's bottom right. Tries to skip it over to Graham Southwick and bottom left, but misses the catch and goes out of bounds. Brian, could you explain some of the field positions that you have been Sure. Us? When I talk about top right or top left, that means I'm talking about the top of the little box where the goal is in the middle of, and same with bottom right and bottom left. X is the position behind the goal, and when I say crease, that's the circle around the goal that only the goalie can step in, or defensive players from the Mustangs team. If any offensive players step in that crease, it'll be a one-minute penalty on them and they'll be man down for that much time. All right, the ball will be thrown out of bounds by Panther Creek. <clears throat> and it will start in the hands of Dan Perron. Dan's going to try and get past the defenders, but he's going to drop the ball. Panther Creek recovers the ball. He gives it down to the middle. And... He's going to drop the ball. Nick's going to stop the ball. Looking for a clear. They give it to Joey White on the left side. Joey's got clear field in front of him, and he's going to sprint up field. He's going to give the ball over to Drew Conway at top right. Drew's going to cut back and look for an open pass to an open attackman. Bad pass to top right. The ball is dropped by Alex Kaminsky. You're going to have to fight over it. it. Alex Kaminsky recovered the ball. He's going to bring the ball up the field and try and get the pass off, but it was an illegal ward. A ward is when you take your hand off the stick and you use it to knock away the defender's stick, which is also illegal. It does not result in a penalty, but it results in a turnover. The time is about 8.36. Yeah, sorry about that, folks. We don't have a working scoreboard. There have been uh, a few technical problems, but we're going to soon hopefully get those fixed. Panther Creek has the ball. Ball went from bottom left to X, and he's going to try and drive up, but he's going to get attacked by the defender defense, and he's going to give the ball up to top right, top left, and then take the shot, but he's going to miss it. When a the time is 8.03. When an attackman from one team shoots on the other goal, but it goes out of bounds, whoever is closest to the time that the ball went out of bounds gets that ball back, but it only happens once. And Number five is sprinting across the field. Take it, take it. Jacob Watkins, our LSM, got the ball up the field and tried to give it off to Trevor Montague, but he could not do so. Their goalie is going to start with the ball. He's going to give the ball up. The, he's going to throw it wide open the middle, try to get it to number two, but it bounced in front of him. Number one recovered it in Panther Creek. He's going to give it back to number 11. He's going to drop it. Dan Prawn's going to over miss it. Zach Bradford got the recovery, and he's bringing the ball down the field. Ball stop right. Ball's bottom right. Grab's going to look for an open shot, and he's going to score. And that evens out the score one to one. Graham Southwick was the one to score that goal. And was assisted by number 15, Alex Kaminsky. Justin Medwar will take this face off to start the new possession. On the wings, we've got Joseph White and Jack Dybolt. Jack Dybolt's also a freshman. He got put on varsity because he's got incredible stick skill. And he's got great footwork, too. He's going to get subbed off so that he, they can get another offensive player on the field, and that offensive player will be Ben Detzer. It was a bad pass to Ben, but Ben's going to recover, pick up the ball, give it to Joseph White, and he's going to take the shot and pipe. And he took another shot, and it was blocked. But since Graham Southwick was closest to the ball the time it went out, he's gonna, they're going to get the ball back. They got the ball back up to top right. Ben Dessler's going to cut. He's going to take the shot, and he hit another pipe. And 
Justin Medward tried to get the ball, but he was unsuccessful at doing so. So it's going to be out on the Mustangs, and Panther Creek is going to get to try and score. The ball's in play. He's going to try and run past the two defenders. He successfully does it. Jacob Watkins is going to try and get very physically aggressive on him and try and knock him out. But he gets the pass off to number nine and then back at X. X is going to try and get the ball to the middle of the field so they can take the shot, but it was blocked and they took the shot and made it. Peter Green scored the scored the goal for the Panther Creek. I know that one of the Mustangs' key players, Cameron White, is out tonight on injury. He's going to be out for a couple of weeks with a separated shoulder that he got last week during the Holly Springs game, and it's going to be a shame that he's out because he's one of our best defensive players, and he was in the starting lineup until that happened. All right, Justin Medwar is going to take the face off, and he won. Jack Diebold's running from the wing off the field to sub in another offensive player. It's going to be Drew Conway. Justin Medwar passes the ball to the middle to Joey White. He's going to take his time to let the deep, to get his offensive players get on the field and situated. He's going to cut. He's going to give it to the middle. It's going to be a bad pass, but eight recovered by Alex Kaminsky. And it scored. The ball was scored by number 15 for the Mustangs, Alex Kaminsky. Unassisted, I do believe. 558 on the clock. We currently have 558 on the clock. Justin Medawar is going to take this face off again with Joey White on the on the wing along with Jacob Watkins, but Jacob Watkins got a false start, so it's going to be automatic Panther Creek ball. He's going to stay on the field this time because they need him for defense. Bad pass forces the ball to go out of bounds on Panther Creek. Dennis Wilson's going to start with the ball. Um, my fault. Zach Bradford's going to start with the ball. Ball's in play. He's going to bring the ball up the field. He's going to try and get the ball to one of the attackmen or midfielders. And he got it to one of the midfielders, Joey White. He's going to get it over to Dennis Wilson, but he drops the pass. Panther Creek recovered. Got the ball to number 11. He's running up the field, took the shot, and missed it. It's going to be Panther Creek ball once again. Subbed out Ben Detzer and Justin Medwar. And they put in Marcus Bullock and that would be Michael Shefke. Nick Arcari is going to hold the ball. He's going to try and get it up the field to Zach Bradford. Bradford's looking for the open pass. Gets it to Joey White with a sloppy pass. Joey runs the ball up the field. He's going to cut in. He's going to get hit a little bit. Tried to get the ball off to Trevor Montague, but it was a bad pass and went out of bounds. What do you guys go through in practice to be able to run as much as these players are? Oh, our coaches have a lot. Of, they make us dedicated, and they're the most dedicated coaches I know. They make us run. They would stay there all day and coach us if they could. They would waste <laughs> all the time of their day to run us and make us better. So there's a lot of conditioning involved? After every practice, we normally condition a little bit, and we condition during practice too. But a lot of it's just stick work. And Alex Kaminsky took the shot, but it was bounced off the feet of the goalie. It'll be a foul on number 17 for Panther Creek. And they're going to take him off and put him in the penalty box. They're going to take off another midfielder so they can put in a defensive player and another defensive midfielder. 
Panther Creek has a penalty. The ball's going to start in Ben Nedzer's hands at bottom right. He's going to pass the ball up to top right. They're going to pass the ball up to middle. See, the problem with causing a penalty and having man down, it means you have to have one less person on the defense, which gives the offense a huge advantage. And Joey White takes up the ball, and that's one of the disadvantages of being on man down defense because you have to run so much more than you would if you could just cover your guy normally. Goal is going to get the ball up the field. It's going to be a bad pass and bounce off the stick of 24. Really? Seemed to trip Graham Southwick. Andrew Conway is going to push number 10. It's going to be a bad pass and a bad catch again. Another bad ground ball. One of the key things to recovering a crown ball, you have to use both your hands on your stick. Number seven of Panther Creek recovered it. Number one's going to bring it up. Number nine's going to take the shot, and it's stopped. Nick Arcuri recovers the ball at goalie. He's going to give the ball across the field to Michael Shefke. Shefke's going to pass it up to Justin Medwar. Medwar takes his time bringing up the ball to get his offensive player situated, but his the bad pass is recovered by number three, the goalie. Number seven for Panther Creek is going to bring the ball up the field. Pass the ball out to number 11. And a yard sale by number 24. A yard sale is when um, the defensive player checks the guy's stick and it yeah. causes him to knock the ball out or knock the stick out of his hands. And Middle Creek has scored again. The score is now three to two, Middle Creek. Scored by the ball, scored by Graham Southwick, and it was assisted by number fifteen, Alex Kaminsky. They're going to run with a not so traditional two long stick midfielder wing. It seems like one of the long stick midfielders are going to get their stick checked. If the stick pocket is not is not legal, which means you can see some space between the ball and the bottom of the head of the stick, then it's going to result in a three-minute penalty that's unreleasable, which means that even if you score a goal, that the penalty is not accepted, and it looks like his stick will be clean. Drew Conway is going to take this face off. For middle, for middle Creek. We have some interesting sound effects tonight. It's going to be a false start on Drew Conway, so Panther Creek is going to automatically bring the ball down the field. It's going to bring the ball down bottom, top right. It's going to pass it down bottom right. It's going to try and get it to X, but he's not open. So he's just gonna look for the open pass. He's gonna give it back to bottom to top right left top right. He's gonna look for another open pass as number 18, Troy Diebold plays great defense on him. Ball was shot, but blocked by the body of Jacob Watkins, who's gonna try and get the ball up the field, but there's no open pass, so he's just gonna bring the ball until he finds the open pass. He's got the ball to Trevor Montague, he's gonna look for another open pass to Drew Conway. They're going to keep working the ball around the perimeter of the field until they find a flaw in their defense, and they're going to take the shot and try to score. Ball moves bottom right. Ball's at X. He's going to cut out, and he's going to end up at bottom left. He passes the ball to the top left, but it was a bad catch on Ben Detzer, and... He's going to try and play defense and knock him out, but he couldn't get on his inside too much, so he's just going to try and push him back. I've noticed that this game can be very violent. Are there no rules per se? There are rules, one of them being, like, you can't. There's a certain check called a cross check, which is the most lethal of all of them. It's You can't hit somebody with a stick when you're going in for a full force hit. 
You have to have your hands on in front of the stick when you hit them, so it does not completely hurt them. <laughs> We have one minute and five seconds remaining in the first quarter. It'll be timeout on Middle Creek. So far, I like the way that Middle Creek is playing right now. And we are now going to a commercial. Welcome back to the sports block. We are out here at the lacrosse game, varsity. Scores currently three to two, Mustangs are up. And it starts off with Mustangs ball because they called the timeout when they were in position. They're gonna have a bad pass, they're gonna drop the ball, but Trevor Money is gonna recover it. And there will be a push in the back on the Mustangs and it'll be Panther Creek ball. We have under a minute remaining in the first quarter. Number two, 22 on Panther Creek is gonna dodge Try to dodge Trevor Montague and he's going to get the ball across the field to the long stick midfielder, number 24. We have less than 45 seconds remaining in the first quarter. There's going to be a timeout called by Panthe Creek so they can drop a little play for themselves so they can hopefully score. So far, the Mustangs, even though they're missing one of their key defensive players, Cameron White, they're gonna they're still playing a great tight defense, only allowing two points to be scored on them during the first quarter. Usually by now, there's a few more, maybe four or five, but they managed to pull it off without him, and things are looking good for both teams. We are now going to take a short break. You're watching the Sports Block. And we're back with the sports block. We only have a few seconds left in the first quarter. Okay, number five is going to start with the ball. He's going to try and go for the open shot. He takes the shot, but he misses. The ball is going to bounce off the stick of number one. They're going to try and use this little play they drew up within the next 20 seconds of play before the first quarter ends. Great check by Zach Bradford, but it seemed to be illegal. There's going to be a 30-second penalty on number three, Zach Bradford, with an illegal check. 30 seconds, what is it for? Illegal check. Hold. All right, ball's going to start bottom right at number nine for Panther Creek. 
They're going to try and take advantage of this while they, while they still have the time left in the quarter, and they're going to try and not so much work the ball around, but they're going to try and cut back and forth to get an open guy. And that's the end of the first quarter. The final score at the end of the first quarter is 3-2 to two Middle Creek, and we are about to take a short break, and you're watching the Sports Block. We're back with the sports block. It's the start of the second quarter. The ball's going to start within Panther Creek's possession at bottom right. Number seven is going to bring the ball across the field to X, down to bottom right. He's going to pass it up to top left, who's not covered. There's still time left on the penalty by Zach Bradford, so they're going to try and manage to play this without getting scored on. And Nick Arcuri with the great block. He's going to look for an open man to pass it to, and the penalty just got released. Nick Arcari can't find anybody to get it open to, so he's just going to throw it down the field. Luckily, Jacob Watkins got it. He's going to give it down to Graham Southwick. Graham's going to try and get open. Gives it over to number 28. Ball was stopped by Panther Creek. <coughs> be a push on Panther Creek so it'll be Mustangs position or it'll be Middle Creek position it looks like a number five is down on the sidelines and he's cramping I think it looks like he is the trainer is gonna look at him he's that's Jacob Watkins he's one of our key defensive players hopefully he'll be good by the time that the second half starts at least Mustangs have the ball. Number four, Joey White has it. He's going to give it across to number 28, Dylan Bryan. He's going to give the ball down to X. He's going to try and split dodge and get open. He's going to look for the open shot, and it's blocked by number five. So we have the about ball go uh, out. We and have about ten and a half minutes left in the second quarter. Number 15 had a very successful split dodge. Ben Detzer tried to get the quick stick into the goal, but was not successful and missed. It's going to be Mustang's ball again. Ben Detzer with another dodge. He's going to give the ball up to 28, but he's going to miss the catch. That was a great feed, but he just couldn't get it off. It's going to be a push in the back on the Mustangs, and it's going to be Panther Creek ball. 
It's going to be another successful dodge on Panther Creek. A swim dodge to get past number tw number six on the Mustangs. It's going to bring the ball down the field. Down to bottom left. The ball's at X. It's going to bring the ball up to top right. Across the field to top left. You can try and get through that defender, but was very unsuccessful in doing so. Zach Bradford, number three, picks him up. Ball's thrown to X, bounce off of his foot, almost rolling out of bounds, but Panther Creek recovered it. Dan Perron playing very strong defense on him. And he gets past the defender, and Nick Arcuri takes a stick up to get rid of it, or to stop it, and he tries to get rid of it to number 24, Jack Detzer. Jack with the slap check. Panther Creek recovered the ball, got it to top right. He's going to drop the ball. Joey White's going to sweep the ball out from under him. He's going to pick it up. Try and get the ball down the field. He's going to try and slow it down so his defense can, or his offense can get settled. Down to bottom left and then to X. Ball's bottom right. Ball's top right. Ball is top left. He's going to go for the split dodge. And he's going to get open. And he's going to take the shot. And is unsuccessful as number three stops it. Passes the ball up to top left. He's going to bring the ball down the field. Try and s speed up this offense. Gets the ball in the middle. He misses the block. He's going to take the quick stick. And scored. And that ties up the score 3-3. Three to three. Brian, can you explain to us what a split dodge is? A split dodge is when the attackman or midfielder has the ball and they're being played one-on-one -on -one by a defender and they need to get past them. So the only, the best way to do that is to shake them up a little bit and make them go one direction so that the attackman or midfielder can go the opposite direction and get open. All right, we're going to start off this possession with a face-off done by Justin Medwar. Medwar is going to pick up the ball, get the ball to Jacob Watkins, who's back in the game. Get the ball to number six. Back to Dylan Bryan at X. Pass to bottom right to Graham Southwick. Top right to Drew Conway, who just, or not Drew Conway, Ben Detzer, who just got subbed in. We're going to speed it up and try to get somebody open on a cut. And it will be Panther Creek with the recovery. They're going to try and keep the ball in, but it was a very bad pass to number 24. He's going to get the ground ball, pick it up, and he's going to drop it. Then he picks it up once more, and he's able to get it off to number 7, who brings the ball down top right. Ball goes down to bottom right. They're just going to try and work the ball around the field now. Ball's at X. He's going to go in. He's going to try and dodge him. Almost stepping inside that crease, which would, which would result in a penalty. A missed block, but a great check by Zach Bradford. Knocks the ball out of his hands, and Bradford picks up the ball. He's going to give the ball to Justin Medwar. He's going to look for something to give it to. Dennis Wilson happens to be open. Bring the ball down the field to number 12. Balls bottom right, balls at X. Balls top right, balls middle. Balls bottom left. Balls at X. That's where the split dodge becomes completely useful, especially when you're at the X position as an attackman. You want to try and beat your defender to the goal so you can score. It looks like there will be a penalty or just a push on Panther Creek. No resulting penalty, but Metal Creek will get a free possession out of it. Mendez is going to bring the ball down to – he's just going to run around to X so they can probably run a play. But it was a nice dodge, but it was a great check by the defensive midfielder for Panther Creek. He's going to try to bring the ball down the field. But they dropped the ball and Middle Creek recovered it, but there will be a flag and a penalty. And is moving without the ball important, Brian? 
It's very important to move even if you don't have the ball because especially if you're on offense, you need to get open so the guy with the ball can give it to you. And you can create gaps in the defense so you can take shots and score. We have six minutes and five seconds left remaining in the second quarter. And there's a penalty on Middle Creek. It will be Panther Creek's ball. They're going to be man down for about a minute. <coughs> the penalty is due to a slash. <laughs> Looks like there's a bit of confusion on the field between the refs. Okay, the ball's going to start now. Number five gives the ball to top right. Ball goes bottom right. Ball's thrown to X. X can be back to top right. Back to top, who's uncovered, and then a shot, but it's missed. The time is 5 minutes 51 seconds. Ball's going to start at bottom right in the hands of number 9. He's going to give the ball up to top right. Ball to middle. Ball stop left. This is the best way to mess up a team's defense is just to throw the ball around the perimeter. It really Sometimes it'll mess them up, and if they speed it up, it messes them up even more. It would be a missed shot. Yep. Time is it? 529. We have 529 remaining in the second quarter. Middle Creek could not get over, so it'll be Panther Creek's ball. We're going to give it a top left in the middle, and then to top right, and then bottom right. Back to top right. Back to middle. Back to top left, down to bottom six, left, nine, up eight, to middle, seven, six, top right. Five, he's going to take the shot, and he's going to score. And that makes the score 4-3 Panther Creek. Although that the Mustangs were man down on defense, I do not think that they should have made that shot. It was a pretty far off shot. And shot was made by number nine on Panther Creek and it was unassisted. There are five minutes and nine seconds remaining in the second quarter. The face-off will be taken by Justin Medwar. It will be an illegal hold on the Mustangs, so it will be Panther Creek ball. Panther Creek's going to bring it down the middle. Ball's top right. He's going to cut back out. He's going to try. He's probably going to give the ball to top left. Four fifty-five. It is even now because of the goal, and it'll be 10 on 10 on the field. Number one for Panther Creek is going to try and work that ball around the perimeter. Look for an open pass. He, try, he gives the ball up to bottom right and then to top right. He's giving the ball back down to bottom right. Ball's at X. Looks like he's going for the cut, but he slipped. But he successfully got up and made it. And the ball got into Eleven's hands. He took the shot, but missed. It'll be Panther Creek's position. Number nine's going to take it from bottom right. There is, There are four minutes and 29, 25 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Number nine is going to dodge the defender. He's going to run around the perimeter, but Sh Michael Shefke is able to play him. He got the great lift off. And it will be a ward call on Panther Creek. Once again, a ward is when the person with the ball only carries the ball with or the stick with one hand, and they use the other hand as a tool to ward off the other player's sticks. Meaning they push people? Yes, they push the other player's sticks off of them so they can't hit them. Joey White has the ball top left for the Mustangs. The ball tries to make its way down to bottom left, but it is missed. It'll be Panther Creek's ball. Ball will be played at X. They're going to give the ball to the goalie. And the goalie's going to look for an open player. It looks like the Mustangs are coming out right behind them. It'll be a great check to get the ball out of the hands. Graham Southwick has the ball. The ball is checked and is knocked out of his stick. He's going to try and dodge him and make his way up the field, but 
Number 14, Marcus Bullock, gets the check off on his stick and knocks the ball out of bounds. A check is any kind of um, technique to use your stick to hit the ball or hit the stick out of the other opponent's hands. The time is 3 minutes and 28 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Joey White will start with the ball for the Mustangs coming on top left. It's going to make the make its way over to top right to Drew Conway. And Drew is a sophomore, correct? Was he on varsity his freshman year? He was not on varsity his freshman year, but he was moved up for the playoffs, so he has at least a little bit of experience behind him. All the current sophomores and freshmen on the team are very, just very good. <laughs> That's the best way to describe them. They have a lot of years under their belt, and they're able to, they just have great stick work and great footwork, and they're just great lacrosse players. Graham Southwick bringing the ball down from top right. He is a junior, and he, he also played JV his sophomore year, but he was moved up for the playoffs. So we made it to the playoffs last year in lacrosse, correct? Yes, we made it to the third round. The ball is going to get passed up to top left and over to top right. Give the ball back to top left. He's going to take his time. He's going to go for the dodge. Drew Conway is going to pass the ball over to the middle. He's going to get the ball down to bottom right. He's going to try and look for the pass to X, but it was not available. He's going to work himself around to X, and he's going to look for another dodge to get open. But it looks like the defensive player is playing very tough defense on him. So he just gets the ball back out to Dylan Bryant. Drew, back up to Drew Conway. Over the field to Alex Kaminsky. He's going to go for the dodge too. Number two goes for the hit but is unsuccessful. Goes to Dylan Bryant. Takes the shot but is blocked. He gets the ball back and takes his time getting it out. Gives the ball back up to the middle. <coughs> can take the shot and it is no good. I've seen a lot of goalies play, but I I honestly think that our two goalies are very evenly matched even though we have two goalies and they only have one. I think all game it's just going to be a battle of who's who can miss the shot better. The ball will start at bottom right and it'll make its way up to top right. Number 15 for Panther Creek will be subbed in. He's going to look for the pass to number 15, but Jacob Watkins will play in defense on him. We have a minute and six seconds left on the clock in the second quarter. It will be a timeout called by Panther Creek so they can get a play run off. These scores so far in the second quarter is 4-3 to three, Panther Creek. We're going to take a short break. This is the Sports Block. And we're back with the sports block. We have about a minute and six seconds remaining in the first or second quarter. Panther Creek is going to start with the ball. Number five is going to start in the middle. I think they during that timeout they designed a little plan or they're running one of their specialty plays to where they can break a hole in the defense and score on them. The ball is now in play. Number five is going to 
give the ball down to bottom left. It's going to make its way over to X. We have under a minute remaining in the second quarter. Ball makes its way top right, over to the middle. Jacob Watkins with a good check. Going to keep him in. Both of the defenders playing great, playing a great double team on him. It's going to make its way out to the side. Number one's going to run it over across X. Let's try to feed the ball to number 16 so he can take the shot, but it was an unsuccessful catch. And Middle Creek will recover it. There's 30 seconds left in the half. Try, they tried to get the ball back in field even by just throwing it, but it, it looks like the, the Mustangs called timeout before he was knocked out of bounds. And this timeout is called with only 22 seconds remaining in the second half. And the score is 4-3 to three, Panther Creek, and you're watching the Sports Block, and we'll be right back. And we're back with the sports block. We have 22 seconds remaining in the second quarter. And the score is 4-3 to three, Panther Creek. All right, Mustangs will start with the ball. It looks like number seven, Justin Madouar, will take it. They have two, th he has three defenders in front of him. He's gonna pass the ball over across to Joey White. He's gonna take his time getting down the field. I'm not sure they're gonna run any plays or if they're just waiting to the last second. They might be doing that. Alex Kaminsky has it. Drew Conway has the ball, top right. He'll be stopped by number 17 on Panther Creek. Recovered by Ben Desser, and that will be the end of the half. The final score of the half is 4-3 to three, Panther Creek. And we are now going to take a break.
And we are back with the sports block. Starting the second half, the score is 4-3, to three, Panther Creek. Every half and every quarter, start, not every quarter, sorry. Every half starts off with a face-off unless there is a penalty because during the half times they do a stick check and there might be legal or illegal sticks. And it seems that Panther Creek does have a person in the box and the Mustang started with the ball, so it looks as if... Panther Creek. Oh, Panther Creek is starting off with the penalty that they received during the second quarter. What does that penalty do? The penalty keeps one player in the box and off the field, which takes a huge toll on their defense and gives the offense a easier chance to break a hole in the defense and score. And I believe that was the end of that penalty. Indeed it was. The smartest way to do to run a penalty during the beginning of a quarter or a half is to have the player that you want on the side of the field with the ball. Oh, it looks like it was scored by Ben Detzer. And that makes the score 4-4, four to four, tying up the game. As I was saying, when the ball starts at the beginning of a quarter or a half, then... The team wants to keep one of the defensive players as an offensive player and the side of the ball they want the the side of the field they want the ball on, they're gonna keep that player on the opposite side. So that when the ball when the penalty is released, then the player can just walk onto the field and they already have the player they need on the other side of the field on the field so they can just walk across the line and get into the action. Looks like Justin Manoir would take the face off and he knocks it out to Joey White for the Mustangs. Jake Watkins is going to come off the field for Drew Conway. He's going to give the ball up to Drew. And was the injury from earlier tonight recovered from? Yeah, it looks like he was just a little bit cramped up, but he seems to be running fine right now. Hopefully he it doesn't. it's not a reoccurring injury, and it won't happen later when we do need him. Joey White's going to give the ball to Justin Medawar. He's going to give the ball to Alex Kaminsky, who takes the behind-the-back shot, but it is blocked by number three. Dylan Bryant, number 28, is going to attack the goalie with the ball, and he's going to get really aggressive. But the goalie gives the ball up to number five, who dodges Justin Medawar. Number five is going to bring the ball up the field. He's going to have number six run to the box, and an offensive player, who's number 11, is going to come out. And then they cover the offensive player so that they do not come up off the field and get an open pass and score. They're going to give the ball to number 11, who's played by Jacob Watkins, down to the bottom right, over to X, quickly over to bottom left. He's going to take it from X. He's going to dodge, but he's going to slip and fall. Great recovery by him, though. He's going to give the ball to bottom right, back up to top right, up to top left. Gonna be a bad bounce pass, and Justin Medawar is not gonna chase him. He's gonna get the easy ground ball. He's gonna take his time. He's gonna go for the split dodge. Takes the shot, but he misses. Panther Creek was closest to the time the ball went out, and it'll be Panther Creek ball. They're gonna start the ball bottom right. There are about nine minutes and 24 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Ball's thrown up top left, but it's a bad pass and it's now in the middle of the field. You cannot you have to have four players on or you have to have three players on one side of the ball on one side of the field. Great interception by Jacob Watkins. Bad pass over to Zach Bradford, who gets off the pass up the field to Justin Medwar. Got slashed in the leg. The refs are going to call a ref timeout, and Medwar is going to check off the field. They're going to bring in another midfielder and attackman. It looks like he got slashed pretty badly in the leg, and that getting slashed by a big ball, it hurts. It hurts a lot. Have he's you been, experienced that? I've experienced it a lot. But uh, he's going to take a little bit of time off the field, and he's going to rest up, and hopefully he'll be back in the action soon enough. The ball's going to start top right at Drew Conway. He's going to bring the ball down to bottom right. Ball's back up to the middle. He's going to go for the dodge, but it was 
He just gave the ball down to Dylan Bronadex. He gives the ball to top right. Ball over the middle. Ball's top left. Gives the ball down to X. Very nice dodge. Ball's up to top left. The ball's the middle. Or top right, sorry. Ball's the middle. He's going to take the shot. Blocked by number three. Joey White recovered the ball for the Mustangs. Going to give the ball to Priest, but it will be a penalty for a push in the back. There are seven minutes and 59 seconds remaining in the third quarter. If the goalie gets a penalty and they do not have a backup goalie, they have the option to take off one of the defensive players and they will do that so they can keep the goalie in the goal. Now both teams will be man down. It will still be even, but it will be nine on nine. It looks like the penalty was a cross check for one minute. What does that mean? That means he used his stick. He held both ends of the stick and he rammed the bar into the person's back, which is mm -hmm. the most lethal check and it, it hurts also. I've seen plenty of experiences where kids have concussed and very deeply injured other players with the cross check. We are going to take a break. The final score, or the score of the third quarter so far is four to four. And you're watching the sports block. We're back with the sports block. The refs had called a timeout, and we left off as the score was 4-4. Four to four. It looks like Panther Creek has selected who their temporary goalie will be. I did not. Honestly, I did not know this rule existed, but they have to pull in another player on the team, and they're going to dress him up as a goalie, and they're going to play him as a goalie until the penalty is up. Is that why it's better to have multiple backup goalies? 
Yeah, it's always good to have at least one backup goalie in case one, there's a penalty on the goalie and they have to sub him out for a minute or two. And there's also it's also good to have a backup goalie in case the primary starter gets injured. Then they have somebody they can fall back on and hopefully he'll know what he's doing. All right, the Mustangs are now man up, so there will be one extra offensive player on the field, but it will be a bad catch on Ben Detzer's part, and the ball will go out of bounds. And the defensive player picks up the ball, but he drops it out of bounds. It's going to be the Mustangs' ball once again. He's going to start at X. He's giving the ball to Dylan Bryant, bottom left. It looks like they're coming up with some kind of play. Joey White gives the ball over to top right. Down, down to bottom right. He's going to take the shot, and it's good. That makes the score 5-4 to four Middle Creek. That's a great way for an offense to react to a man down is to take advantage of it and have the man down defense score on him. It looks like number one is going to rush off the field and quickly give his equipment back to number three for Panther Creek so they can get dressed up and get back in the goal. Unless the goal is unreleasable after, or unless the penalty is unreleasable, if there is a guy in the box and they, the teams, either team scores, then they can come back on, on the field after the goal. Another timeout has been called. Middle Creek will call the timeout. We have seven minutes and 29 seconds remaining in the third quarter. The score is 5-4 to four Middle Creek, and we'll be right back. And we're back with the sports block. After before the timeout, the score was 7:29, or the the time was 7:29, and the score <laughs> and the score was five to four Middle Creek. Earlier this evening, the Panther Creek girls beat Middle Creek pretty badly. The score was 19 to eight. All right, Justin Medwar won the faceoff and got the ball down the field to Middle Creek <laughs> offense. But it looks like the ball will be out on Middle Creek, and number 11 for Panther Creek will hold the ball and wait for the ref to call it in play. Number nine, Dan Braun, he's going to play some good defense on him. He's going to stay low. He's going to stay agile in case of any dodges or cuts like that. Number 11 brings the ball to top left. Gives the ball to bottom left, but the ball rolls out of the stick. Number 21, Dennis Wilson, trying to play some strong defense, but he gets around him, knocks him over, checks the ball out of his stick. Number two, Michael Shefke recovers the ball, gets the ball, tries to get the ball to Troy Diebold. Looks like Middle Panther Creek recovered it, but it was a bad pass, and Jacob Watkins could not get the ground ball. Troy Diebold fights for the ball, but there will be a push in the back on Middle Creek, which will not, which will result in a penalty. Looks like there's a little bit of confusion between the refs. They're going to talk it out. There'll be no penalty on the play, but it'll be Panther Creek ball. Time is 
The time is 6.21 left in the third quarter. Number 11 for Panther Creek is going to start with the ball. The ball is now in play. It's going to work it down the right, the left side. It's going to bring it down to bottom left. It's going to switch with the player at X. Work the ball over to bottom right. <coughs> He's getting here for the dodge. He's going to work his way, work the ball to X. He was going to look for an open guy on the crease to get the ball to like that. Take the shot, but it was blocked. Fighting for the ground ball. Panther Creek recovered it. Got the ball to one of the attack men at top left. Get knocked down to his knees, and the ball will be thrown out. It'll be middle of Creek ball. One of the key parts of this game is recovering the ground balls. Usually the team who recovers the most ground balls is the team that wins the game. Nick Arcuri is going to take his time getting the ball up the field. He's going to get jumped by number one. Gets the ball over to Joey White, number four. Runs past. Jacob Watkins is going to run off the field. And it looks like Ben Dutcher is going to sub on. Dan Perron takes his time cutting up the field. They're going to start working the ball around, taking their time, find a hole in the defense. He's going to get checked, but he's going to get a body check, and he's going to get knocked over. They're going to fight for the ground ball. Looks like Panther Creek recovered it. That was very skillful on Panther Creek's part to get a ground ball when being covered by those three Middle Creek players and to be able to run it up the field by himself. Number nine is going to bring the ball down top right. They're going to switch from top right to top to bottom right. Balls work to X. Balls thrown to top right. Bad pass. He's going to take his time getting the ground ball. Dan Braun, once again, is going to play tight defense, but he works the ball down to what would be bottom right. He's going to go for the fake. Works the ball to the crease, takes the shot, but it was missed shot too far to the left, and it'll be out, but it will be Panther Creek ball. Four minutes and nine seconds remain in the third quarter. Another bad shot taken by, middle, by Panther Creek, and that will once again result in Panther Creek possession number nine for Panther Creek is gonna start with the ball he's gonna work it down to bottom right back up to top right across the field to top left down to bottom left back up to top right or top left sorry over to the middle down to bottom left over to bottom Panther Creek is running an offense called a 2-2-2. Two, two, two. That means they're going to have two players at the top, two players in the middle, and two players at the bottom. That is very effective if you want to make the defense run a lot and tire them out. Whereas our offense is mainly a 3-2-1, where we have, or a 2-3-1, sorry. Where we have two guys up top, two guys on the sides, a guy at the top of the crease, and a guy at X. That is mainly that offense is mainly used for running plays out of because you have players essentially all across the offensive side of the field. See, just like that. Yeah. They're going to get the ball to the crease as much as they can, and the guy at the crease is going to take the shot. That makes the score 6-4, to four, Middle Creek. We have three minutes and one second remaining in the third quarter. It's like Drew Conway is going to take the face off this time. We have, once again, two of the long stick midfielders playing on the wings. Number 24, Jack Diebold, and number 5, Jacob Watkins. So do the, some of the players have a different length of stick than others? Yes, defensive players, they have a 5-foot long stick, or a 6-foot long stick, sorry. And the attack men and midfielders generally have about a 4-foot long stick. But... One of the positions on the field is you can have a fourth long stick player on the field, and that is called an LSM, which is a long stick midfielder. 
who generally takes either the face-offs or the wings. He's used for defensive play and not so much offensive play because it is a lot easier to control the, control the ball when you have a shorter stick. But it also looks like Panther Creek just scored on Middle Creek. And that makes the score 5-6 to six Middle Creek. We have two minutes and 32 seconds remaining on the clock in this third quarter. Number 13, Drew Conway is once again going to take the face off. We have the normal wing set of a short stick midfielder, Joey White, on one side and a long stick midfielder to play supreme defense, who's number 24, Jack Diebold. But it looks like it'll be a false start on Drew Conway, so... Panther Creek will start with possession. It works the ball from top left down to bottom left, over to X, over to bottom right. Nobody is open, so he's going to have to try and get open himself to get a pass off. Gets the ball up to top right, but it was a bad pass. And it looks like number 24 for Panther Creek swatted across the field. Jack Diebolt tripped and fell when he was trying to recover the ground ball. Number nine is going to sprint up the field, take the shot, but it bounced too soon and went over the goal. Nick Arcuri was able to get in front of the two Panther Creek attackmen and was able to get possession of the ball. A minute and 52 seconds remain in the third quarter. It looks like the goalie was going to start with the ball, which doesn't happen too often, but it does happen. It's important for the attackman on for Panther Creek to attack the goalie whenever he has the ball because the goalie is generally the person with the worst stick handling. It looks like number seven, Justin Medwar, is injured. What can you say about that? Um, it's probably from it's probably from the slap that he took to the it might have been the knee. He could just be a little bit sore and he might have to wait out the rest of the game. He could be back tomorrow, or he could be back in a week. It looks like we'll have to find that out soon. Okay. Drew Conway, number 13, is going to try and rip his way past number 11, but it's unsuccessful, so he gives the ball out to Medwar, or to Joey White. One minute remains in the third quarter. Graham Southwick starts with the ball at X. He's going to go for the dodge. Gets checked pretty hard. He's going to give the ball up to top right. Joey White looks like he's conjuring up a little play here. He's going to go for the cut. Finds, his, finds some room, gives it to Ben Detzer. Ben Detzer's going to come out, gives it back to Joey White. He's going to look for an open shot, but he was could not find one. Alex Kaminsky takes the shot, but misses. We have under 30 seconds remaining in the third quarter. It will be Panther Creek's ball. He's going to jump the goalie, but the goalie's going to get it out to the right. Now, number 28, he's going to go to the guy with the ball. And the only completely open person on the field is the goalie that's closest to him to pass, but it looks like they're going to knock him out of bounds. It's going to be a Middle Creek ball with 16 seconds left. With, with 16 seconds left on the clock, they're going to try and get the ball to the inside, maybe bottom left or bottom right, or even the crease if they can. And they're going to try and get off a shot as quickly as possible to get that goal before the quarter ends. Brian, what would you say that Middle Creek needs to do in order to win this game in the fourth quarter? I think they're doing great on offense and they're keeping the ball on offense, but they need to play better on defense. They seem to be losing their men a lot, even on, but their man down is pretty solid. I think that their even defense, which is the basic man-on-man, -man, they're losing their guy a little bit, and they're getting a little shaken up. But they seem to be playing a pretty solid game overall. I think at this point, either team could win it. Even, just, even though that the Mustangs are up by one point, they still have a whole other quarter of play, and anything could happen. That was a very good shot taken by Dylan Bryant. The goalie just happened to be in the way. 
In the end of the third quarter, the score is five, six to five, Middle Creek. And we're back with the sports block. At the end of the third quarter, the score is six to five, Middle Creek. We have a senior player of the game. It is Dennis Wilson. He plays on defense. His number is 21. He plans to attend UNC Chapel Hill and major in exercise and sports sciences. His favorite teacher at Middle Creek is Ms. Mina Bosman. His favorite subject would be history. His hero is his grandfather. He does not plan on playing he does not plan on playing lacrosse in college, but anything could happen. His pregame ritual is warming up our goalie Nick Arcuri. And his favorite activity to do when he's not playing lacrosse is playing the guitar. Alright, it looks like this fourth quarter is gonna get kicked off. It looks like we have Drew Conway taking the face off once again. We have Joey White and Jacob Watkins at the wings. The Panther Creek women's lacrosse won 19 to eight over Middle Creek earlier this evening. Looks like there's a little bit more confusion on the field between the refs and the coaches, but it looks like the, the face off will start right now. The face-off is won by Drew Conway. He's going to bring the ball down the field, get it off to number 15, down to X, down to bottom left. Ball is top left. Ball over to top right. You can go for the dodge, take the shot, and it bounces off the foot of the goalie. Graham Southwick looked for, went for the catch, but it dropped before he could. Looks like a defensive player from Panther Creek got it. It was a bad pass right to Ben Dutzer. He's going to feed it to number 15. He scores. That makes the score 7 to 5, Middle Creek. And we have 11 minutes and 21 seconds remaining in the game. The goal was scored by number 15, Alex Kaminsky. It was assisted by number 12, Ben Dutzer. Alex has scored two goals this evening. Looks like number 24, Jack Dybolt. He was a defensive player or a long stick midfielder, as you would say. He is taking the face off. And we have number four and number five both on the wing. Jack is playing great defense right now by boxing him out and kicking the ball out. But it looks like there will be a push, and it'll be Panther Creek's possession. They're going to bring the ball down the field over to top left. Joey White's going to play some defense on him. He makes his way past him. He's going to take the shot, but it was way left. Recovered by number nine. He's going to give it to X. Gives the ball back up to top right. Bad pass. Number five, Jacob Watkins, is going to fight for it. But it looks like Diebold is swatting the ball around, trying to get it himself. Dylan Bryant gets the pass. 
He takes the shot and it bounces off the pipe, which does not count. He's going to fight for it. He's going to. He was able to keep the ball in. Alex Kaminsky with the ground ball. Ben Detzer with the fake. We have about 10 and a half minutes remaining in the game. It looks like the midfielder, number eight, Joel Huddleston, makes his way onto the field to play at the crease. Bad pass by Dylan. Makes the, makes the ball's way over to bottom right. Dodged him perfectly. He's going to take the shot, and it's good. And that makes the score 8-5, to five, Middle Creek. How do you think it is that Middle Creek has been able to pull ahead when we've been so closely matched all game? I think that our offense is – we've kept the ball on offense most of the game, and we were able to tire down their defense, and they're not thinking as smartly as they would if they were just fresh. And – it's just the fact that we kept the ball on the offense makes a huge difference to um, the outcome of the game. Even if you don't score when you have the ball on offense, you're able to tire out those defensive players. It's like Panther Creek won the faceoff but dropped it, and Drew Conway got possession. Go through the ball down again. It looks like number seven on Panther Creek could have an injury. He seems to be limping off the field. I think that the sports med team is going to take a look at him, probably keep him out for the rest of the game. Although he's only limping, injury, any injuries like that to the foot or the ankle or the shin are very serious. Any injuries are serious, but they want to make sure he's healed up for his, for his next game on Friday. And the officials have called a timeout. They're just going to take him off the field and look at him. They're going to sub in another player for him. It shouldn't make too much of a difference, though. Looks like Middle Creek is subbing out their defensive players and putting in some fresh ones so they can play some great defense. The ball's going to start in the middle with in Panther Creek's possession. We have 10 minutes and 3 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. The ball is now in play. The man in the middle works it over to top right and gives it back to the middle. He's going to take the shot, bounces off the head of one of the Mustangs. And it looks like they're fighting for that ground ball, but it looks like Panther Creek got it. But Jacob Watkins was able to knock it out of his stick. They're going to fight over it. Seems there was a push on the Mustangs, which results in Panther Creek ball. He's going to start with the ball top right, move it down to bottom right. I'm going to switch back up to the top right, back down bottom right. We have about nine and a half minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. He's going to cut. He's not covered. He's going to take the shot, and it's good. I think Panther Creek would be more in this game, and the score would be more tied up if they were able to get off more shots. It seems like Middle Creek has taken almost twice as many shots as Panther Creek has. What will a win tonight do for Middle Creek? It'll it'll give them a slight advantage to their next home game, which will be Friday against Apex. And having momentum going into that game will be great because Apex is one of the top in the state. But the Mustangs, the, with the way they're playing tonight, they'll be great contenders for winning that game on Friday. It looks like Drew Conway will win that faceoff and give the ball to top right. Feed it over to Graham Southwick, who un was unable to quick stick it into the goal. Bad pass from the goalie to number six. Looks like the ball moved down the field. Dennis Wilson playing great defense. Joey White with the ground ball. Works it over to number 24, Jack Diebold. Are Jack and Troy Diebold siblings? They are siblings. Troy Diebold would be a sophomore, and Jack Diebold would be a freshman. They're both on varsity, and they're both very good players. We have eight minutes and 54 seconds remaining in the game. The ball will be called out on the Mustangs. It'll be Panther Creek ball. They'll take it from behind the midfield line. They're going to try and put two defenders on them to knock them out. They, but they have to give them a little bit of room, a little bit of room so that they have a chance. The score is 8-6, Middle Creek. A very nice fake pass by number 11, but it looks like there will be... 
I think it would be a ward call. And Dylan Bryant picks up the ball and gives the ball down to Alex Kaminsky. He's going to take the shot, the underhand shot, unsuccessful, and goes way right of the goal. There are eight minutes and 38 seconds remaining on the clock. It'll be Panther Creek's ball down at the bottom of the field. It'll be a bad pass, but they're able to keep the ball in. But it looks like number six, Graham Southwick, will get the ground ball. But it's dropped, and Panther Creek will cover it. What sort of protection do these boys wear to prevent being badly injured? Um, well, you have to wear a helmet. You have to have a mouthpiece, um, elbow pads, shoulder pads, chest pads. Um, and if you're a goalie, usually you have to have a throat guard. You don't have to wear elbow pads, and you have to wear a cup. They never use one. They never use It'll be Middle Creek's ball. They're going to bring the ball up the field. Joey White with a nice dodge over to number 12, Ben Netzer. It was a bad pass. Ben could not get it. Graham, South, Graham Southwick, number six, tried to get it, but could not. And the ball went out of bounds. Did we get it or are they gone? They, they we have about eight minutes remaining. For a second, it looked like there was a timeout, but I think they're just talking with the coaches on the field. It'll be in Mustang's ball. It looks like it was out on Panther Creek. Team the ball to number four, Joey White. He's going to sprint down the field, cut out, give the ball down to bottom right. Ball goes top right, over to the top left. He's going to cut out. There are seven minutes and 39 seconds remaining in the game. Ben Dutz are back with the ball. Graham Southwick trying to cut in and look for the shot, but ball's checked out of his stick. Looks like he was kind of tripped a little bit by one of the Panther Creek players. Looks like Ben Dutz are playing great defense, knocking out the defensive player, running up the middle, fed the ball to Dylan Bryan, and he took the shot from his knees. That makes the score 9-6, to six, Middle Creek. That was a great act of teamwork and chemistry right there. Not a lot of players could pull that off. It looks like our sports med team is working with Panther Creek's number seven. Once again, he was the player that limped off the field a few minutes ago. Hopefully he'll be all right. It looks like number 24, Jack Diebold from the Mustangs is taking the face off. He's gonna box out the other face off guy. He's gonna fight for that ground ball. He tries to keep it in, but he, has, he steps out to save it. It's going to be Panther Creek Bowl. The main focus of one of, of our coach, Coach Robinson, he, his motivation for us is called scrapping. He just wants us to get down and dirty, and he wants us to get the ground ball as much as possible because, like I said earlier, the team who usually has the most ground balls ends up winning the game. Marcus Bullock, number 14, defensive midfielder. He... He's not so great on the offense, but he's able to play a really good defense. He's able to stay on his man. Looks like Nick R. Curie was able to stop the ball. Gives it to Zach Bradford, who throws it off the field to Troy Dybult. Troy Dybult manages to stay in. Timeout called by Middle Creek. They're going to draw up a play. There are, in, at the end of... Uh, with six minutes and 36 seconds remaining, the score is nine to six, Middle Creek. And we're going to take a break. This is a sports block.
we're back with the sports blog. The score is 9-6, to six, Middle Creek, and we have about 6 minutes and 35 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Ben is going to start with the ball at top right. He's going to make his way around and dodge one of the defensive players. Bad pass over to Justin Medwar, who is back in the game. Oh, Justin's back. Tries to get the ball down to X, but was able to swat it back in after almost going out. Number 15, trying to get the ball up to top right. Ball makes its way down to bottom left, back up to top left. Ball's top right. We have just under six minutes remaining in the game. Justin Medwar looks for the open man is Joey White. Joey White looks for the shot, but he was covered. Gives the ball to X. Back over to Joey at bottom right. Goes for the shot, and it's good. And that makes the score 10-6, to six, Middle Creek. Joey White was the one to score that goal. There was no assist on the play. Justin Medwar will be taking the face off for the Mustangs. On the wings, we have number 18, Troy Dabolt, and number 5, Jacob Watkins. It's good to see Justin back in the game as he's one of our key players on the offense, especially for facing off and getting the ball. Just like he did there, he manages to get the ball most of the time. The only problem he might have is trying to find an open man when the wings won't spread out and get open for him. Manages to get the ball down to bottom left. Justin's going to come into the crease. He gets the ball to the top, top left. Ball goes top right to Ben Detzer. There's, there's a skip pass down to bottom left. Over to X. Bad catch. Number 24 in Panther Creek is going to play some tight D. Ball goes top left. Bad catch again. He's going to get the ball up the field as quick as he can because they need to score for this game. Dennis Wilson is going after the ground ball. And it looks like Michael Shefke is trying to get it as well. All the defensive players are in this now. Nobody can keep the ball in, so it looks like it will be Panther Creek ball. We have just about four and a half minutes of play left in the fourth quarter. Number one is going to start the ball at X, give it to bottom left. Up to the crease, but it was a bad catch. Ben Detzer with the scoop, but he drops it. Man Panther Creek manages to get the ground ball. It takes the shot and is blocked by number 27, Nick Arcuri. A very bad pass, so the defense will have to get back quickly. Looks like Zach Bradford was able to get a good check on him. And there is a penalty. There will be a penalty on number 21, it looks like. He tripped the offensive player from Panther Creek, so there will be a man down, and Panther Creek will start with the ball. Ball's going to start bottom left. Go back up top left. Over to top right. Over to right. Down to X. Looks like Panther Creek switched up their offense to the 2-3-1 as the Mustangs are doing. A bad shot. Nick Arcuri trying hard to get over to the ball so they can keep possession of the ball. But it looks like Panther Creek managed to get it. And there are three minutes and 44 seconds remaining in the game. Ball goes over to X, down to bottom right. They're going to look for a cut right here. Try and get somebody from the backfield up here to, to take the shot. And there's another penalty. Three minutes, 31 seconds. Another penalty call coming 
coming from the ref. Zach Bradford with the slash. It looks like we're going to be two men down, which means the defense will only have four players, and the offense will have six. This is the best time for the Panther for the Catamounts to capitalize off the lack of defensive players and try to get back into this game, which has about three and a half minutes left. Ball goes bottom right, takes the shot, and it's good. That makes the score 7 to 10, Middle Creek. Luckily for the Mustangs, both of those penalties were releasable, so after they scored that goal, the Mustangs will have a strong full defense now. Justin Medwar will be taking this face off for the Mustangs. Jack Dyble will be on the wing, and Ben Detzer will be on the other wing. Time. Time is three minutes, 24 seconds. Three minutes and 24 seconds remain in the game. Holly Springs just lost six to five. Holly Springs just lost six to five at Cardinal Gibbons. Holly Springs just lost six to five at Cardinal Gibbons earlier tonight. The Mustangs actually played a tough game last Friday against Cardinal Gibbons and the result of a score of 13-8. There were a few uh, major errors on defense and offense, and there were a few minor errors that they seemed to work out during practice the last couple days, and they seemed to improve on. Nick Arcuri just got the save. He's going to get the ball out onto the field to number 12, Ben Detzer. Ben is going to work his way up the field to Jack Diebold. That was a perfect clear. A clear is when the goalie or any defensive player from on one side of the field tries to get the ball to the opposite side of the field so they can score. A nice spin move right there by Dylan Bryant. About two and a half minutes remain in the fourth quarter. Dylan passes the ball up the field before he gets knocked out of bounds, and Ben Detzer happened to be there to catch it. Mustangs will call a timeout to conjure up a play that they can run to hopefully score once more. As of now, the score is 10-7, to 7, Middle Creek, and you're watching the sports block. We're going to go to a break. Back with the sports block. Two minutes and 21 seconds remain in the game, and the score is 7 to 10, Middle Creek. Mustangs were in possession of the ball before the timeout, and they will continue at possession after the timeout. With two minutes and 21 seconds left in the game, the Mustangs are going to have to play really good defense to manage to win this. Bendetzer is starting top left with the ball, makes his way over the middle. Going to switch with the middle. Justin Medwar is open in the middle. 
So we're going to try and hold on to the ball for the majority of the time so that the Panther Creek does not have time to get the ball down the field and score. Two minutes remain in the game. Mustangs are trying to play the hardest defense they can so that Panther Creek does not get the ball down the field. And a penalty flag was raised. When a penalty is called on the defense, on the offensive side of the field, the other team has the chance to pass the ball around and shoot and score before the penalty is called. But if they drop the ball in the process and it hits the ground, then the penalty is instantly called. Dylan, number seven, number 28. Penalty will be one minute on number 28, Dylan Bryant, for a slash. This is not what the Mustangs want right now, as they'll be man down on defense. With and only a minute and 40 seconds remaining. Even though they're up by a few points, they still have a chance to get the ball down the field a few times and score each time. The ball's going to start bottom right. Make its way up top right, over to the middle, over to top left. Bad pass and bad catch on the Panther Creek side. Luckily, they got the recovery. Ball's top right, ball's bottom right. Ball back top right. Over to the middle, top left, bottom left. Over to the top for the cut and over to the crease. Good check on the defense's part. Nick Arcuri tried to get the ball to Michael Shefke, but the ball bounced off of him. We have a minute and four seconds left in the game. Michael Shefke is going to play the guy with the ball, but in a man down situation, you don't want to play your guy too much or uh, a f offensive player might sneak up from the back and catch the ball and score. Ben Detzer gets the ball down the field. He's going to try and keep it out, but he's got to try and stay in the restraining box. What is the restraining box? The restraining box is the big white box around the goal. If you stay out of that box too much, for too much time when you're on offense, that results in a turnover automatically. So you have to stay inside of it. That's why the Panther Creek defensive players are trying to force them out of there. Luckily for the Mustangs, they're playing a very tight defense and they're not letting anybody get inside of them. About 18 seconds remain in the game. Panther Creek's gonna take the shot, blocked once again by Nick Arcuri. He's gonna toss the ball up the field to somebody. It doesn't really matter who. Ball's out of bounds. It's going to be Matthew Creek's ball. They're going to hopefully try and get off one more shot in the next seven seconds. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Took the shot and missed, and that is the game. The final score is 10 to 7, Middle Creek. Just as I suspected, if Middle Creek was to keep up the great all, the great defense, that they were going to win this game. Okay, final score, 10-7 to 7, Middle Creek, and you're watching the Sports Block.
and we're back with the sports block. The final score was 10 to 7, Middle Creek. And Brian is going to go through the goals from this evening. All right, we have Joey White, number four, scoring one goal. Number six, Graham Southwick with three goals. Ben Detzer, number 12, with two goals and two assists. Number 15, Alex Kaminsky with three assists and two goals. And Dylan Bryan with one goal. And on the Panther Creek side, we got number nine, Noah Peterson, with three goals. We have number one, Peter Green, with two assists and two goals. Uh, number 11, Alex Masteroni, with an assist and a goal. And that'll do it for the Panther Creek team. Make sure you watch the sports block this coming Friday as we play in a baseball game versus Green Hope. And thank you for watching the sports block, and make sure you watch Friday. Thank you.